So good morning everyone, welcome to my review of the Carabao Cup quarterfinal clash between the Toon and Brentford. Um, coming to you from the car, I'm just holding the phone. I've just discovered, just been to Asda, buy a few last minute Christmas bits. I got myself a proper little dash um, phone holder, dash mount phone holder, because the one I had was a bit rubbish. And um, the car should start beeping, I don't know what's going on. But yeah, so, and I've just discovered, upon coming out of the car, come, getting back in the car, that it is completely empty. So someone snagged that while well, I'll put the trolley to one side to get some fucking sugar, I think. But any, anyway, um, Carabao Cup quarterfinal today. Huge game. Huge, huge game. Um, we're not the ideal run up to this game that we would have wanted um, because we know that Brentford are going to be a good side. Uh, we haven't performed particularly well in this um, competition thus far. Obviously, looking back at Newcastle, first of all, uh, we we beat Blackburn. I think I think we were at home for that game. Beat Blackburn one 0 Ryan Fraser grabbed his first goal for Newcastle. Um, dominated by a Championship team, they were the better team. They had the ball. That's going to become a common common thing throughout our whole season. Uh, and then it's Morecambe seven nil, seven nil away. Obviously, a league um, another lower league, league two side. I think Morecambe and um, they just. Didn't really turn up, did they? We were, we were the better team. Jalinton grabbed a couple of goals. Jacob Murphy was man of the match, arguably. Then it was on to Newport County, and we had to take it to penalties to get past them. Uh, one all. John Shalvey managed to salvage a draw in the last couple of minutes with, with a smart finish from just inside the box into the top corner. Then it was on to a penalty shootout, and I've never seen. I can't remember the last time I saw Newcastle uh, win a penalty shootout, so that was nice. But, you know, three games against lower league opposition and we struggled, really. OK, we easily swept beside Morecambe, but in the two games where we met some resistance, uh, we really, really struggled. Uh, Brentford, on the other hand, they have um, put out two Premier League. So we're struggling against lower league opposition. They've put out um, or defeated two Premier League sides. Um, penalty, okay, what the most two recent games, uh, one all against West Brom. Okay, that went to penalties. You could say an element of luck, but you know, it's a Premier League side. They pushed them. And then they uh, dealt with uh, Fulham 3-0 quite comfortably. Although I, I, I re-watched um, some extended highlights last night and Fulham did have chances. Uh, Lookman caused them all sorts of problems like he did with us last weekend. And um, so yeah, the, the, they had they had Fulham had some chances. So there are areas we can get at them, but Brentford will be very confident, especially when you look at um, their league form in comparison to ours. So our last three games, we've um, if you look at our, our yeah our last three or well, last few games, sorry, we've um, beaten Palace, beaten West Brom, lost heavily against Leeds. And then drew against Fulham. Obviously, that Fulham get the less said about that Fulham game, the better, to be honest. Um, you, I, I'm looking at and their la, their games in December. They've had six games so far in December. Been a busy period for them. They uh, beat Rotherham two 0 away. Drew with Blackburn two all at home. Um, so back to back draws with it. Another draw nil nil at home against Derby. Um, then they beat. Uh, Nottingham Forest, 3-1 away. Drew away 1-0 with Watford and then beat Reading 3-1 at home. So they're, they're unbeaten. Unbeaten in December. Um, so if we look at it quickly, what we're talking, three draws, three wins. Um, they're, they're all, I don't know an awful lot about the championship, but in my opinion, they're all like established championship sides. Obviously, Reading were in the Premier League 15 years ago. And that they're always pushing there, there, thereabouts. Watford have just come down. Nottingham Forest are always pushing to come up. Um, Derby have been unlucky not to come up. Blackburn, obviously, they've been down there for a while, but you know they're they're a, a registered, a big side if you like. Rotherham are starting to establish themselves in the championship. So, if you look at the two teams, you look at our last two cup games, for example, they've beaten a Premier League side three 0 um, we struggled against a lower league side, Newport, and salvaged our status through penalties. So they'll be, obviously, the more confident. 
and we look at our league form, you know, if you just take the last two games, for example, they've drawn one all with Watford away and beaten Reading 3 1 at home, whereas we've been smashed 5 2 away by Leeds. And then, thanks to the referee, we've been um, given a point one all Fulham at home. So, this has all the makings to be a massive banana skin for Newcastle. And and if we slip up now, we'll have no credibility whatsoever. We'll be the laughing stock of the Football League because we've been given every chance. A bit like England at the World Cup a couple of years ago. We've been given every chance to progress um, to this semi-final. You know, we, we Blackburn, Morecambe, Newport County, uh, Brentford. No disrespect to either of those four teams, but we as a Premier League side should be uh, dealing with them fairly comfortably each round. Um, so, yeah, if, if we slip up against Rother, um, apologies, Rother and Brentford, which I'm not confident that we're going to get through this. If we slip up against Brentford, we're going to be laughed at because, you know, it's just such a Newcastle thing. It's just such a typical Newcastle balls up. But unfortunately, it's entirely possible. One thing I will say is they've played a lot more games than us in, in December. They've played a lot of games. Um, so you could argue, hopefully, fatigue will be catching them up. However, you've got that same element with us with the coronavirus uh, outbreak at the training ground. We haven't trained as much. Guys have been in bed. Um, so I, I don't know if that's going to be a factor. I think it will be a factor. Perhaps later on in the game, they'll start to flag more. But um, yeah. Another factor there, best player, the guy who scored that wonderful sort of Cruyff turn nutmeg and then outside the box strike against Fulham, um, Ben Rama. Uh, he's on loan at West Ham. So we obviously don't have to worry about him. However, they've got an ex Newcastle striker, Ivan Tony or Ivan Tony, um, who is doing the business for them. So it's almost written that he, he'll get a goal against Newcastle after being not given the opportunities that it's now clear that he deserved. Um, at the club, so all in all, I don't know. It's such a tough one. Um, in terms of rotation, I haven't heard much news of what um, Bruce is going to do. Obviously, we don't know. Uh, I, I would be tempted to rest, and I, I'm pretty sure actually I would rest Callum Wilson. So I think if we're going to get anything from the next three Premier League games, i.e., City, Liverpool, and Leicester. I'm not expecting anything more than one, maybe two points from those games. We'll be lucky to get um, two draws and a, and a come away with two draws and a defeat. We might be able to scrape a draw against Leicester, cause although they um, looked good against Spurs uh, yesterday. No, Sunday, sorry. Good against Spurs. I, I think they can be got at. Um, City aren't firing on all cylinders, so we might have a lucky day like we have done a lot recently. But yeah, if we've got any chance of getting anything out of those three games, we need Callum Wilson fit and firing. Um, he started pretty much every game. So it, it, it'll be good to give him a chance to have a rest. I think Dwight Gale will be chomping at the bit to start this game. I think this is also a game for Andy Carroll. Um, I don't think Andy Carroll should be anywhere near the starting lineup in the Premier League at the moment. So this is almost like... It, it, we can't look at this game as a chance just to rest big players because it is a big game. It's a huge game. It's the most important game um, of Steve Bruce's Newcastle United managerial career. But I think it is an opportunity to rest some players. So I, I would... Um, obviously, you've got to stick, stick with Darlow. There's, there's no... With goalkeepers, obviously, there's no need to rest them as much as that. Um, Gillespie... Uh, he obviously ballsed up in the last round, didn't he? So I wouldn't be inclined to, because this is such a big game. You know, if, if we end up going lost Fulham, uh, lost Leeds, draw Fulham, lost Brentford, lost City, lost Liverpool, lost Leicester, we're then looking like our season could be an absolute disaster. So I'd be tempted. In fact, no, I, I would definitely start Darlow in this game just to shore things up. Um, left back, this might be another game for Paul Dummett. I know he started on uh, Saturday, but he was taken off in good time. You know, you can always put Jamal on or Matt Ritchie on later on in the game. Centre-backs, all depends who's available. All depends who's available. I don't want to see Isaac Hayden playing centre-back again. Not that he's not capable of a good performance. He is, but he needs a rest, man. So I would probably say... Oh, it's 
gonna have to be Clark again, isn't it? But he, he he's gonna be knackered. But um, do you know what? I don't know defenders. What we're, we're, we're I, Emil Kraft can do a job in centre back, and he wants to prove himself after that rubbish clearance in the last round that led to their goal. So yeah, uh, Emil Kraft and pr possibly uh, Kieran Clark in the centre. Um, Yedlin looked okay against Fulham, to be honest. He looked all right. So while he's still at the club, let's, let's use him. Yedlin at right back. He's probably going to go 4 4 2 again, isn't he? Ugh. Um, I would say midfield. I would, I'm pretty, I'm 99% sure Matty Longstaff's going to go out on loan. However, again, same as Yedlin. While he's at the club, let's use him. Uh, there was a big furore about getting this him on this new contract. So he's played 29 minutes of football so far or something ridiculous. So I'd be tempted to put Matty Longstaff in the middle of the midfield. Um, alongside him. Oh, Jesus. Isaac. Isaac, maybe he, he had 45 minutes off against Fulham. And then he didn't have to do too much against um, Fulham when he came on at centre-back. Maybe put Isaac in. Or maybe put um, Sean and Matty alongside each other. That might be a shout. Put Sean and Matty Longstaff in the midfield together. Get a bit of that, you know, a bit more meaning, a bit more passion between them. Then you can obviously rest John Joe. Have John Joe and Isaac relatively fresh for the City game. Because there are on their day, there are two best midfielders. There are best midfield partnership. So we need them fit and firing for City. Um, I think Ryan Fraser is a game for him. It's a game for him to start. Uh, I'd have Fraser one wing and then probably... I, re I reckon Fraser on the left, Jacob Murphy on the right, Dwight Gale and Andy Carroll up top. There you go. Um, not many foreign players in that team, if any. DeAndre Yedlin. But um, I, I think that would that's a good team. That's a good team going forward um, for this game. You know, Dwight Gale's a proven goal scorer in the Premier League, but he's a prolific goal scorer at championship level. Andy Carroll's going to be a handful up top for anyone, particularly at a championship level, particularly if their girls are slightly tired. Then you've got uber pace on either wing in Jacob Murphy and Ryan Fraser. Um, just thinking about the midfield, um, you've also... Not a big fan of his, but you've obviously got Jeff Hendrick there as well, just as someone who can do a job. Um, you lose a lot from him on the right-hand side, but... Stick him in the middle of midfield, and you know he he could do a job and let Matty bomb on or let Sean bomb on, you know. Um, but yeah, the two pacey wingers could frighten the life out of Brentford. You know, getting ball, especially Jacob Murphy if he's getting balls into the box like he did against West Brom. Oh my God, you know Carroll's going to relish that. Um, obviously, Yedlin is very pacey, so he could provide that right hand side if we got Murphy and Yedlin could scare the life out of Brentford. Um, obviously, if Paul Dummett starts at left-back, not the best going forward, but that doesn't matter because Ryan Fraser more than makes up for that. So, um, just, just to conclude, obviously, Brentford are a threat. Our season is hanging on a knife edge, I would say. We, we, we needed desperately those three points against Fulham because, um, like I said, we're realistically going to get one is the best we can hope for. In the next three games out of nine, but um, if we if we win here and deserve to win, you know, I I don't want another last minute goal to take us to penalties, or you know, l let Brentford dominate us, and we like get a counter attacking goal like we did with Ryan Fraser against um, Blackburn. Let's win this game. Let's deserve to win this game. Let's be the better team. Let's put in a great performance. Let let's show make it obvious who's the Premier League team and who's the Championship team. And then we can look forward to, I think the draw is, who's left? Um, Everton, Man U, City, Stoke, and then I think it's Spurs and Liverpool. So the best we can hope for there is Stoke, really, isn't it? Um, but yeah, let's get past this game first. Like I said, let's win this game, win it well, deserve to win. No injuries. A few guys getting... P good performances. Um, I'm looking at Ryan Fraser. I think he could be the man for this game. Hopefully, Andy Carroll can score his first goal if he plays. And uh, yeah, let's avoid this banana skin and go on to the next round. And then, fucking Man City's next. But yeah, 
anyway, um, I cannot wait for this game tonight. I'm nervous about it, like I said. Nervous, dreading it, excited, conflicting emotions. Oh, my God, this is so important. Please, please, guys, don't fuck this up. Anyway, um, see you later. Come on, Finn.